In this video, I am going to try something different. Feel free to share your opinions with us in the comment area about something I might have missed in the video. So let's go ahead and jump right into this thing. We are going to have a set of stairs here with four steps and a handrail. This is not a guardrail. And the reason why I'm suggesting that this isn't going to be a guardrail is because if somebody was to actually put enough pressure on the guardrail over here, there's a very good chance you could just simply flip the stairway on its side. So if you were going to build something like this and use this as a guardrail, you might consider fastening the stairway securely to either a concrete floor or a group of concrete footings. So with that said, let's go ahead and start taking this thing apart and provide you with some measurements. Now another thing I want you to keep in mind is that I have drawn this stairway with a computer program and have not verified any of the measurements at all. Feel free to share with us any problems you might have had assembling this stairway, along with any measurements that might not be correct. So again, I'm just kind of taking you on a tour here to show you how everything could be put together. And we are going to be using 2x8, 2x6, and 3x12s for our treads to create a stronger stairway. I have this same stairway designed with 2x12 treads and 2x12 decking. However, I don't know if that's going to be strong enough for your project, so you can always make it a little stronger by adding thicker lumber. Next up, let's go ahead and separate the stairway into a couple of sections because we are going to be assembling some of the stairway in sections. For example, we're going to assemble this section, this section, and this section first. And if you're not interested in the handrail, you could always shorten the lengths of these 2x4s and make these boards a little bit longer, get rid of this board here, and get rid of the notches that you were going to cut here to prevent the lower boards from extending through that side of the stairway. And if you noticed, I built this side a little different than the other side, just to provide you with two different examples. You can use either one or a combination of both of them. And I won't be providing you with the lengths of these because you could simply cut these in yourself or add some of these other numbers together to get the lengths that you need. And hopefully you can see all of the lengths here. 3 foot 9 and 3 eighths inches, 4 foot 7 and 7 eighths inches, 5 foot 6 and 3 eighths inches, and then of course 6 foot 4 and 7 eighths inches. And pay attention, this 5 inch measurement is critical because once we add our two and a half inch thick stair step to the top here, it's going to provide us with a seven and a half inch riser. And if that doesn't make sense, study the model a little bit further to see if it does make sense. And when I'm referring to a two by eight, the two by eight is an inch and a half thick by seven and a half inches wide. Our three by twelves are two and a half inches thick and 11 and a half inches wide. If you're dealing with lumber dimensions that are different, you might need to adjust some of the measurements in this model. Again, you can get a pretty good idea at what the measurements are here. Our steps are going to be 10 and a half inches deep to provide us with a one inch overhang. And you can always adjust these measurements to make these boards a little bit longer or a little bit shorter depending upon the design you would like to get for your stair steps. So not too difficult here. You can see where the measurements should be right on the money here. Three foot two or 38 inches for these boards here. And I'll leave it up to you as to whether or not these boards need to be treated or the bottom boards here need to be treated lumber, depending upon what the stairway is going to be sitting on top of. Next up, let's take a look at the measurements for the other side. And these measurements here might be a little different than the boards on the other side. And hopefully you can see the measurements here that all make sense. Again, our 10 and a half inch deep stair steps, an inch and a half notch, to be cut into our boards here for our inch and a half thick lumber. And don't forget that these boards will need to extend past the outside of this board here three and a half inches. So keep that in mind when you're putting 
this section together or connecting it to the other two sections. Again, two by eight lumber here that's going to be seven and a half inches tall to provide us with a seven and a half inch riser height. Again, these boards can be ripped down and made a little bit shorter. And if you were going to make these boards a little bit shorter, the handrail is going to need to be modified because the angle of the handrail is going to change. And you can attach all of these boards together with 16D nails or screws. And you can always use smaller or longer screws if you need to, even framing hardware. You might be able to use some type of framing anchors or straps to create stronger connections. Next up, let's go ahead and head over to our decking to provide you with some measurements for that. We are going to have an eighth of an inch gap in between the decking boards. And we will be installing a board underneath the tread. This right here will prevent a four inch round spear or round ball from going underneath the section of the stairway. And I'm not gonna go into all the details of why we're doing that, but that might be one of your local building codes. And if it is, you might consider double checking all of the measurements in this stairway to make sure that it's going to work. Next up, let's go ahead and take a closer look at the hand railing and provide you with an example of why we're extending this board three and a half inches out. And that will be so that the post, these three posts can sit on top of them and securely fasten to them. And hopefully that makes sense. Next up, let's take a look at the handrails in pieces here so that we can provide you with some measurements. And again, hopefully you can see all of the measurements here. Inch and a half here, and then two inches thick down here, two foot, eight and a half inches here. And keep in mind that if you're off just a little bit on some of these measurements, or if your lumber is a little bit thicker or a little bit thinner, then some of these measurements might not work out as well. And again, two foot, six and a half inches here. These balusters will be the same as the ones on the other side. And we will be shaping the top of this post here along with this board here. This one might be a little tricky to cut. And this will be a 45 degree angle here. 17.8 degrees here. And these angles don't need to be perfect. They do not need to be exactly 17.8 degrees. 18 degrees or 17 degrees is going to be close enough. Unless you're a perfectionist, then go ahead and make sure that you're using the exact degrees here. I am not that much of a perfectionist, so don't need to get things that close. So again, a nice example of the lower section of the handrail here. And everything here will be 35 and a half degrees. The end of this board, these boards, this angle here, this angle here and then this angle here will be a 90 degree angle off of this line here and of course the measurements for the lower handrail and then after we take a closer look at these measurements here we can go ahead and start putting this thing together and again you can use nails screws any fastening devices you think are going to work for your project if it's going to be outside an exterior stairway, then make sure that you use corrosion resistant materials like galvanized zinc or stainless steel. And all of this stuff right here can be assembled on a flat surface. That is, if you have a flat surface to assemble them on. If not, I would find a flat surface because it's going to make your job a little easier. And then once they are fastened together, we can go ahead and proceed with the next step, which will be fastening them together so that it will end up looking something like this. And keep in mind that this corner can be built differently. You could always just put this post on the outside and then extend the decking another three and a half inches. Let's go ahead and take a look at it from the inside. And we can attach this board to the post here because you would have already attached this board here to these boards over here. However, on the other side, you might not have anything to attach these boards over here to until we attach this section, which will look something like this. So once you have this 
section put together, you got a pretty good idea what the stairway is going to look like along with how you're going to be attaching the treads and the decking to that section. Now I'd strongly suggest installing this board here, just simply nailing it or screwing it to the bottom of the step before assembling it, before putting it in place, because it would be very difficult to attach it afterwards. And you might need to use some longer screws, something that might be four or four and a half inch and even longer screws or nails to attach the two and a half inch thick materials to the lower section of the stairway here. Next up, let's take a look at a couple of connectors that you might consider using, like a piece of angle iron here, where you can either bolt the angle iron or use a lag screw to attach this section here to the upper part of the tread, or a bolt that will go all the way through. But something here is going to be needed to make this section a little stronger. And of course, that would become self-evident after you installed it and didn't install any hardware or connectors like this. And if you're not interested in installing this until after the stairway is built, that's fine. If this is a little wobbly and doesn't seem strong enough, then go ahead and try using something like that. As far as these posts go, we can always install some bolts through them also. I don't think nails or screws are going to be strong enough to provide you with the support you're going to need. However, you could always try them and then add some stronger connectors later if it's not going to be strong enough. Another thing to think about when you're positioning the bolts is to make sure that they're not going to be in the way of other pieces of lumber. For example, these bolts here might need to be moved over a little bit further to avoid having the washer sticking out a little bit further on the front there. And you can see where this one here is moved over a little bit and where we've used a strap here. Just went ahead and installed a corner strap to make this a little bit stronger. However, something like this might not be very attractive and you might consider using something else if it's going to create problems for the exterior view and design of the stairway. Next up, let's go ahead and take a look at the handrails. I would suggest pre-assembling both of these, but not this one here. This one should be installed in pieces. However, for this one here and the other one, you can go ahead and assemble them and then attach them to the stairway. And we're going to be using an inch and a half by inch and a half balusters here that will be centered in the 2x4, leaving us with an inch on each side. So make sure that you understand this because you're going to be laying out the position of the balusters with these lines and a few measurements. And those measurements should look something like this. Five and a sixteenth, five and three sixteenths all the way through. And of course a 45 degree angle here. Let's kind of zoom in and take a look at some of these measurements and how they are laid out to position the balusters for your handrail. And of course, this one here is coming right off the corner here. And we are going to be attaching the side balusters to the posts. And the reason for that will be to make this section of the handrail a little stronger. And of course, the spacing will be the same from that point over because this and this should line up here. This one and this one won't be lining up, and I'm not going to bother explaining why they don't need to line up. Just simply take a look at the assembly and how it's going to attach to the posts and the rest of the stairway. Next up, let's take a look at the other section along with the measurements of that section. So again, not too difficult coming off the corner here. And this baluster will attach to the 4x4 post. And 5.5 inches, this is only a sixteenth of an inch less than 5.5 inches. With a 1.5 inch wide baluster is almost the maximum distance for our 4 inch sphere. You cannot pass a 4 inch round object through any section of the stairway including the balusters. So you might consider adding another baluster and changing these measurements to reduce the distance in between the balusters 
to less than four inches, maybe three and three quarters or three and a half inches to prevent any problems with the building inspector. Because if they grab their measuring tape and it's four inches at any spot here, they're not going to pass the stairway. Or should I say they might not approve of the stairway and the project. And again, we're in one inch space here. The balusters are centered in the two by four. Next up, let's go ahead and secure this part of the handrail to the posts. And you can do that by using 16D nails. In our example here, we're using 16D galvanized nails to attach the top board to the top of the post on both sides. Again, 45 degree angle here. And we're going to be attaching the bottom railing with toenails, angled nails, angled screws, and we can even use smaller nails here to attach the balusters to the post, maybe some 8D nails. And you might consider pre-drilling holes to prevent these boards from splitting if you are going to use larger nails. Next up, let's go ahead and install the other side. Again, similar to the way we did the previous section. And again, angled nails or screws down here. You can use screws here. Just pre-drill some holes. And you can pre-drill holes for every part of the stairway if that's going to work better for you. Now with the next section of the stairway, we're going to install the top board first because we're going to be using that to get the measurements we need to install the bottom board. And again, it wouldn't be a bad idea to pre-drill your holes for something like this. Small boards like this tend to split and break when you're driving nails through them, especially if they're larger nails. After you have the top rail installed, you can install the balusters on each side, securely fasten them to the post, or before you fasten them to the post, you can mark the bottom. You can mark the position of the bottom board or the bottom rail so that you can attach that first. So I could always install this board first and then use these to mark the location of the bottom board and then securely fasten that board to the posts and then install your balusters. And again, you can always use screws or nails to connect the bottom board to the post. But again, it might be easier to install the nails this way. And to do that, this board here might need to be installed after not before. Next up, let's take a look at the measurements I have for the balusters here, spacing about six and a quarter inches. And the angles for these boards were mentioned earlier in the video. So you can just simply mark your one inch measurement here, create a straight line here, and then lay out your baluster boards and attach them to the lower and upper boards. And all of these boards can be attached by driving a screw or a nail through them. Same thing with these boards up here. And again, you might need to pre-drill the holes for accuracy and to avoid splitting the balusters. Another thing you could consider doing here would be to use a full 2x4 instead of a 2x2. Two two. So let's go ahead and wrap this video up by taking one last look at our stairway. And if yours looks anything like ours, then I've done my job right and you've done your job right. Congratulations.